Five, four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome everyone to Women's Speakers Association's WSA TV. I'm Laura Rubenstein, your host and producer of WSA TV. I'm also a digital media marketing strategist. You can find me online at transformtoday.com. I'm also the founder of the Buzz Club, the Social Buzz Club at socialbuzzclub.com. Today I am like so excited because we have a muse in the house, Desiree. Hi, Desiree. Hey, Laura. It's great to see you. It's great to see you, too. I would love for you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Sure, absolutely. So as you said, my name is Desiree Aragon. I am a modern day muse. You can find me at DesireeAragon.com. And I have an additional project that I'm working with the Women Speakers Association as a top 100 women experts project lead. So I get to work with a lot of really talented women 100% of the time. Huh. Beautiful. That sounds inspiring. And you mentioned that you're a modern day muse and that not many people consider themselves that. So tell us what that means. Yeah, such a good question, right? In history, we might remember muses as being a term used to somebody who inspires artists to have great art, writers to write great works. Um, for me, a modern day muse is I work with talented, inspirational people to stay uplifted in their creative efforts. I find many times when we're doing great creative work, it can be a little challenging to stay in the best version of ourselves. So my musings are simply to keep people inspired. I love that. I love that you do that. It's, um, you know, one wouldn't necessarily think to look for a muse, but we all need one, right? Yes, right, right. <laughs> so and we get it through lots of different sources. Yeah, so when do people seek you out and why? So it might be when we're changing professions, we're working on a new project, we're trying to maybe go at our creative expression in a slightly different way. Um, maybe we've always uh, done speaking, now we're writing or vice versa. Uh, anytime that we're looking to look at a situation we're faced with and we're needing to reframe something. My clients often come when they're they kind of know where they want to go, they're super motivated, and there's just a slight dialing in or refining or or stepping a little deeper into to really get that inspiration they're seeking. Mm. Sounds powerful. Um, so when people are seeking inspiration, it's it, they may be out of alignment or not. It seems like there's a disconnect and you help them get aligned. Is that right? I think that's a really, really uh, accurate picture of what happens. And I feel as if you know, there's different stages of our lives. Sometimes we get out of alignment and it feels like we're this far out of alignment. I think my clients come to me when they know that they, in some aspect, who they are and what they're trying to do, and the misalignment feels subtle. Like maybe you know that you've always loved to do a certain type of consulting, but now when you're doing that consulting work, you don't feel the same passion you used to. So there is a misalignment, but I feel like working with me, it's subtle and we're just bringing it back to that sense of just feel good 100% of the time. Mm, who doesn't want to feel good 100% of the time? So, <laughs> right. right. So who, so what advice do you have to bring people back to that place of feeling good 100% of the time? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's such a great question. And I use three powerful questions to help people to do that. One of the things I love to ask people is tell me a little bit about where your formal expertise lies. So maybe you have work experience. Um, so what have you done on the job or what have you been paid to do? Where are your formal certifications? What education do you have? What have you been trained or taught through the course of your lifetime? And we refer to that as our expertise. So what is your expertise, right? The second question we like to ask or that I get to know about my clients is what comes easy for you? What's natural? Um, are you somebody who's always found it easy to make other people feel comfortable around you? Are you somebody who has a commanding presence just naturally? Are you somebody who, you know, you get that call at two o'clock in the morning when somebody feels like they don't know who else to talk to and you're the go-to person? Those things that have not just happened recently, but throughout your whole life, that maybe you didn't realize was natural or easy is actually a gift that you have. So what comes natural? What are your gifts? 
And then my third question that I think is really helpful in getting people back into that alignment is a question of what's your full life of experiences like? So have you faced any traumas, any difficulties, any challenges? Have you had celebrations, awards, great things happen? Tell me all about your life experiences and what are the ones that crafted you into who you are today? I think those three powerful questions really help us to find our alignment. Wow. And <laughs> when we get clear on who we are and we put it in context, what I'm hearing from you is, you know, we know our life experiences, we know our gifts, and we know, um, you know, we know what's different about ourselves that we can actually use it to stand out. We're getting a lot of love on, on Facebook. So hi, everybody. Sonia hi. and Advantage Consulting and Gail and Melanie, thank you for being here. So, um, you know, I'm going to put these questions in the chat so people can have them and you all can take to heart what Desiree is saying because they're really, really good coaching, you know, to get you back into alignment. And that is the whole goal because we want to, today's topic is about boosting your brilliance so you make heads turn. And so when you think of that, Desiree, would you agree that the um, getting in alignment, asking those three questions, how does that help boost people's uh, brilliance and make heads turn? Well, you know, you already said it, Laura. It's like a unique identifier. I lovingly refer to this as our expert combination because many times we think of our expertise as our formal experience. But those other questions we asked about our life stories and our natural gifts create our expert combo. And no combination is the same. So for us, we're like snowflakes, right? That every single one is a different one. It has its own beautiful picture, its own beautiful demonstration. And to make our brilliance really stand out to make heads turn we have to know our expert combo so that we can say what makes us unique and i know there might be another coach there might be another muse out there that does great muse work but they don't do it quite the way that i do because of my own unique story my ability to reframe the fact that i can synthesize these things have always come easy for me they make me a muse in my way and other muses muse in their way it's wonderful that we can stand out in our own unique identifying kind of way so that we don't get lost in the crowd. It's amusing. You know, I, had to, I had to say it, sorry. <laughs> <had> to <laughs> it's too good of a word. And we have to have fun here at WSA, which is a requirement. It so, is. <laughs> so speaking of stories and transformation, do you have a story you could share about how you helped a client transform with your work? Yeah, you know, it's funny because before we do interviews like this, we usually have to prepare a couple of stories. And then when it actually happens, you think, well, what's really top of mind right now? And just before we got on the call, I was reminded of a client of mine who came to me because she's a high performing workplace professional. So she's happy with her career. She's satisfied as a consultant of where she's gotten to, but she was kind of hitting the same wall over and over again, where some of the clients she would work with would find that um, they felt as if she wasn't compassionate. And it was a huge disconnect because she's an extraordinarily compassionate person. And she was trying to figure out, well, why is it that they perceive that when I'm, you know, whatever, training or providing them the guidance or, you know, making the information known to them about how they can successfully move through their project, why are they feeling like I don't relate or don't have empathy for their situation? And as we dug a little deeper, we realized the very thing that they were like disconnecting with was, was her gift. It was that she has the appearance of being completely fearless 100% of the time. She steps into every situation. She commands it like nobody's business. And it looks like it comes easy to her. Well, all she had to do was make one switch. And that was simply to let people know, you know, I get scared too. Or before we work on this step of the project, here are some of the that went through my mind. But now that we're here, I know that we're gonna be successful. And by simply just acknowledging what was happening internally, but not expressed externally, she was able to not only get more clients, but launch her, her business as a coach and consultant outside of the organization. And now she does both. She works internally and externally, just because she was able to make that one clarifying change. Wow. And it was just something she was blind to. Blind to it because she had just 
made it her habit to come across confident and her empathy was inside of her. So she knew what she was thinking and feeling. So she never felt like she had to say it aloud and she doesn't have to preach it. It's a subtle statement, but it's changed everything for her. Right. And there's, it's really hard to see yourself, even when you've changed, how it's impacting other people. And that's the brilliance of having a modern day muse, it sounds like. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and let me just point out that she had to be at a place where when people were giving this feedback to her, they were giving subtle feedback, but she just noticed it enough that she wanted to talk about it. So you have to want to have the awareness to dive into the conversation a bit. A bit. You can't really muse without somebody wanting the awareness of what they want to create or build or be a part of. Right. And hmm. so that brings me to a question about when do you think, or why do you think people start seeking you out? Yeah, I definitely, it's at a time that they're saying, mm, here's a switch. Here's a switch that I want to make. And it's, it's maybe a subtle switch. Maybe my art used to be about my angst and now I'm much more in the flow and I'm wondering, um, what do I want my art to look like from that place of flow versus the place of emotional angst? So we talked about when there's just a subtle misalignment, that's a great time for me to play with people. I know there's amazing coaches who help when we're feeling like this. I'm somebody who helps when we're feeling pretty on top of our game, but we just have a subtle adjustment we want to make. Mm. It's just get that edge, you give them that spark, then that's kind of what inspired me to name the show Boost Your Brilliance and Make Heads Turn because you're already brilliant. You already exactly. have, yeah, you already have that and you know it and you're just trying to like, what's missing? What's the missing piece, right? You, you couldn't have said it better. Come around with me all the time and just say it all the time, right? We're, Happy we're to do amazing. So. We are, right? Every single person I meet with the Women's Speakers Association, I swear I could get into a two, three, four hour conversation because I can't get enough of who they are. Exactly. Like, tell me more. How did you get here? What's the story? It just is fascinating how much talent is available across this globe. And every single one of us stands out like a gem. It's just a matter of believing it for ourselves and making those subtle adjustments all the time uh, through our growth, our development, public recognition, and the like, so people can see our shininess. Yeah, and that's how, you know, you just said something very brilliant. I had this visual now of all these beautiful gems, all of the women and women speakers association, the members here are all gems. And if we connect with each of them, we'll see the unique beauty each one is. And but, you know, makes me think if women are feeling unmotivated unmo or resisting their brilliance or afraid of it, where should they start to get their mojo back or to bring to sh polish it up a little bit? Yes. So there's really two answers to that. One is to go from the inside out and the other is to go from the outside in. So I'll start first with the inside out. Going from the inside out says, you know, be willing to do your own personal inventory, right? What is your mindset in life in general? Are you maintaining a positive point of view, one that says that I think things are going to work out? And what kinds of beliefs have you maybe held on to up until now that served you, but won't help you get forward? That whole what got you he yeah, here won't get you there kind of thing from Marshall Goldsmith's work. <laughs> so I really want people to look on the inside and say, what is it that I need to let go of to move forward? And do I really believe with all of my heart that things can and will work out 100% of the time? If I've adjusted on the inside, then the other thing I can do is work on the X side, uh, the X side, the external factor, the outside. And that's to say, okay, what kind of public recognition or acknowledgement or awards might I be able to earn to be able to help me to say that I am an expert? For example, I worked on a collaborative book project a couple of years ago to show that I had expertise in the work that I do as a coach and a consultant, right? Um, or we have the top 100 women experts project at uh, Women Speakers Association. And so women who are feeling especially proud of their expertise are coming into that project and they're getting external recognition as an expert. And then that helps you with your mindset and your beliefs on the inside. So I believe you can start on the outside and work your way back inside or start on the inside and then work your way out. But either way, you need both. You need to believe in yourself and you need to have others claim you're amazing. Brilliant. You know, 
what I especially love about the work, and I'm backing up just a little bit, is that you acknowledge people for the brilliance they already are. Yes. So there's nothing wrong or broken with anybody. And in this personal development world, you actually don't see that a lot. Most people are saying, you're broken, I can fix you. Oh my God. Okay. Now you're talking about the power of women here. Okay. Because that's it. I mean, I'm, I'm a mother, but people used to refer to me as a mom long before I ever mommed. And as a matter of fact, yeah. I might be a better, better mom to adults than my kids. <laughs> because I relate somehow with, you know, grownups, right? That we're here, we're adulting, we're doing the best we can, but truly, truly, we are not broken. We are emotional. We may have even some grief that we've processed or worked through, some trauma in our life, some challenges. We've had some great joyful moments and celebrations, but whatever that makes up all of who we are, we're whole right now. And it is a masculine um, energy that says you're a problem and you have to be fixed. And it's not that there's anything wrong with having problems and fixing them. That's not what I'm saying. But I am celebrating what you acknowledged, Laura, is that as women, we're able to say that everyone is amazing and we want to build you up. And the idea of really understanding that you're starting off not broken, but you're starting off whole, and we're just making you sparkle and shine a little bit more so they can see the gem you are, begins with us allowing ourselves to be seen and not hidden in the gem bag or the drawer or someplace else underneath a pile of rocks, right? right. We need right. to stand out, it's time. It's time, and we have a fabulous question that just came in. And we may have answered it, but I'd like to address it maybe from the point of view that this question is coming from. How do we stop ourselves from dimming our own brilliance for the sake of others? Oh, mm -hmm. oh sometimes we dim our brilliance because we think it's helping somebody else, I suppose. Yeah, okay, so this might bring me to tears. I'm very emotional about all of these topics, but two things kind of came into me intuitively with the question. Um, number one, it, the whole idea of how do we stop dimming our light is stop comparing ourselves to others. So that's not what the question was asking, but that was a really strong hit that I just got that we dim our light because we're comparing ourselves to others. And we're, we're thinking one of two things, either we don't want to outshine somebody we really love, or um, we don't think we can compare, like we're not as bright as they are. Mm -hmm. And we're not, we're not the same light as anybody else. Our light is its own color, its own whatever nuances that make it you know, be what it is. So we have to get out of the comparison game. The second part of that question was, how do we stop dimming our light because others are asking us to? And I'm just gonna say it's a personal journey. And I myself have gone through a very tumultuous year um, because somebody asked me to be less than who I could be. And so I don't think I have specific advice because I think each of us has our own journey, but I can tell you that if you're around anybody in your life that thinks you have to be small so that they can be big, then you need to make an adjustment and you can make it tiny adjustments over time. You don't have to do anything extreme, but just keep making tiny adjustments to allow yourself to shine because you are brilliant. And anybody who understands that brilliance isn't something that everyone can have will give you the space to shine because they want to celebrate you. And I'm surrounded now by the Women's Speakers Association, by an amazing family, by a friend group that I can't get enough of. And every single one of them is going to say, oh, I saw you on WSA TV Live and I'm so excited and da 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 because they want to see me shine. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be extreme though. Small subtleties that just say, no, I'm, I'm stepping up and I deserve this. And when I shine, you shine. Mm -hmm. Shine on baby. Shine Who are you on. not to be? You know, that whole, um, oh, yes. Mary Mary, you know, Williamson's quote is our deepest fear is that we are an addict is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It's our light and not our darkness that most frightens us. So and so on. It's like, but who are you? You are a child of God. You're playing small does not serve the world. And if you need the boost for 
um, bringing out your brilliance. Desiree is here. Women's Speakers Association is here for you. And um, you're welcome for that answer. And Melissa is saying, praise God, everyone matters. Everyone deserves to shine. So thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you, Melissa, for that. Um, so with Women's Speakers Association, you're supporting a very important project and uh, you have a vision for that. So tell us about the project and your vision. Yes, fantastic. Well, we're vetting out 100 women experts to be a part of a collaborative directory project. It's a year of marketing and the public external recognition of being identified as a top 100 women expert. So I'm really, really excited to not only see the final directory of 100 women experts come into play, um, but I'm getting to know each expert through the process of vetting their expertise, understanding who they are, and what makes their expert combo, their unique identifier, really pop so that they can have themselves in that public arena in a really, really valuable way. I find that women have this habit of thinking it's boasting if they say they're a top 100 women expert or that it, it makes them too much. And I'm saying no to that, that there is a lot of space for you to be an expert. And I just have the extra advantage of being able to be the project lead for this directory. That's great. And, and it aligns so much with the topic today of boosting your brilliance and make heads turn. It's just one other way to boost your brilliance to be a part of the book is, or can people find out about it? Yeah, so you can go to um, topwomenexperts.com. And so again, we can put that in the body of the um, Facebook feed. And so topwomenexperts.com will give you all kinds of information about that project. You can also go to uh, wsapublishing.com, and that will give you information about another project we have. Uh, you can maybe you want to do your own book or you want to do a collaborative book uh, for us called Voices of the 21st Century. We'll be looking for more people who want to share their own stories because sometimes we're in a stage of our careers where we're ready to share a story from our life experience. And sometimes we're in that place where we're ready to be seen as the expert we are. So top women experts will give you that public recognition and wsapublishing.com will allow you a place to maybe share your story. And we'd love you as a member if you just want to start shining and getting the confidence and um, being seen as the leader you are in the world, in our Facebook groups and in our um, uh, you know, in our community here. So we have a free level of membership waiting for you at joinwsa.com. Or you can do what Desiree and I have done is upgrade to the premium premier level where we give you more visibility and we really take you into this nest. You have another group where that is surrounding you and sh helping you to shine and bring out your brilliance. And I love the fact that if you're a premier member, you can publish with WSA Publishing. Um, get into the top 100 experts book. If you, we will vet everybody in there, you can, you can apply to be in there. And um, we have the voices books and your own book, like, hey, we will help you get your book out there and be a nice shiny piece of your, your gem, your brilliance. <laughs> so is there any final advice or wisdom? Well, here's what I wanna hear from you actually, Desiree, is the value that you see Women Speakers Association is to you personally and to other women. Yeah, wow, okay. And you want that to be short and quick? The value I see <laughs> is immense. Um, first of all, what, one of the things I enjoy the most is when somebody is working through something, uh, maybe they had an event and they have a question about it or they wanna go to an event, they wanna prepare for it. I love our collaboration through our forums and um, the different calls that we have to work on our professional profiles or to maximize our membership. So I'm a huge collaborator, no surprise. I, I muse, which means I wanna collaborate with people and bring out their brilliance. So everything we do that's collaborative is a big deal to me. But I have to say in this year, which has been particularly personally challenging for me, the Women's Speakers Association has just reminded me why I do the work that I do. And so just seeing talented women come online and celebrate these milestones of their journey really helps me stay motivated and reminds me that if we just keep going forward one step at a time, we're going to see great things happen. So I want to thank every woman who's not afraid to um, celebrate their successes because your celebrations have kept me moving forward during a more challenging year. So I love that about WSA too, Women's Speakers Association rocks. And that allows you and, uh, and us to boost all of our brilliance. 
you know, and make heads turn because WSA definitely does make heads turn. You know, we give you a badge, you get the ability to feel your brilliance and bring that out. So here's to, if I had a, something to toast with, here's to bringing your brilliance out <laughs> and making heads turn and please join us. We Thank you again, Desiree, for a wonderful discussion here today. Thank you everyone for being here with us. And yes, we're celebrating your successes, Tracy and, um, Tracy and Tracy. Tracy Percaido says, hi. Hi, Desiree. Hi. Yeah, that's Tracy Preciado. Woo. Preciado, yeah. thank you. <laughs> All right. We're having too much fun here today, but it is time to end this episode. So we will see you next week with another episode of WSA TV's premiere show. Bye for now. <laughs>